Today's episode, we are super excited to welcome Lucy, who is an established London-based street photographer. She became an Instagram super user, and then in 2019, her book Unfinished Stories was featured in The Guardian, The Times, ITV, and more. Since then, she has further cemented her place in the photography scene by capturing incredible moments on the streets of London and beyond. Take us back to some of your first memories uh, that you have regarding photography, camera. The first memories of photography I had was when I was little and my granddad would have his camera out um, and it would be, it was a film camera and he'd have his cine camera. The cine camera for me yeah, was, mm. yeah, was the real, the, uh, that's what I, I remember, that noise, that click click yeah. of the cine um, film. And uh, so that's the real first memories I had. And I guess I had... I mean, I had a hold of it. Mm -hmm. They weren't any good, the photos. So, you know, I've still got a box at home with, like, the farm over the front. Oh, wow. <laughs> or, like, faces or, like, leaves and dots yeah. uh -huh. and that kind of thing. So there was always a camera in the house. Okay. Um, and I guess I mean, most people probably have a camera for family moments yeah. or occasions. So that's my earliest memories. The Sydney camera is what I do remember, like, vividly and being chased along the beach in Hastings mm. and then, like, watching it back afterwards. Well, I guess I would like those early experiences and how did that sort of like, did you sort of continue to like take, start taking photos from a young age or were you always interested in like capturing moments, I'd say? I, I, I'd say no. I mean, I was always quite creative, like more of the, like the writing kind mm -hmm. of um, creativity. Um, and then, I mean, I got, I started doing my A-levels, dropped out um, because I developed an eating disorder. So mm -hmm. that kind of took over everything. Okay. And um, photography and anything creative kind of was my back then. Right. Um, and so, yeah, that, I, that kind of controlled me mm -hmm. for about a decade and a, a bit longer. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I, I wasn't quite sure what to do in life. So I was actually going to do hair and beauty. Oh. I've been the worst. <laughs> 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 the like, interview we watched uh of you from what is it called remind me the Tropes. Tropes. yeah your hair looked so good there. i <laughs> yeah. scared oh my god the hair so was so good um so yeah I, and then yeah i dropped out of the a levels and then went thought about doing hair and beauty mm -hmm. and then i did a travel and tourism course okay um and then that kind of took over mm -hmm. and i was still like going through the eating disorder kind yeah. of thing and then um, I got my first well, first proper job for mm -hmm. Monarch, well, Cosmos Holidays and Monarch Airlines. Okay, but let's say, just to, just to take it back a tiny bit, how was it like growing up in East London? South in South, in South East London. Yeah. I mean, I think South East London, it, it kind of makes you very street aware. It's very yeah. culturally diverse. Um, I love it because of that. Um, so... I mean, lots goes on. It's always busy. There's a market in London, yeah. so there was so much going on. And so it was a like, typical like like on your fools and horses vibes. Yes. So I went to college in Bromley. So oh okay. Oh okay. So yeah. very very different areas. Yeah. And um, Monarch was based in Bromley, so oh, very okay. different to like Lewisham. Uh huh. Okay. As you said, you were around eighteen, nineteen. You got your first job. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that job and also? You know, I, I guess it affected your the way you see photography and tr travel world quite a lot. So the job that I was doing was um, media coordinator, no brochure coordinator. Yeah. So and it was a very junior position. I pretty much looked at transparencies all day right. and okay. coded them, put them into the envelopes for the different um, hotels mm -hmm. and destinations, and then gradually I just became more involved in the brochure kind of. Yeah aspect of pulling together a brochure from start to finish mm -hmm. it's given a bit more responsibility and then as people left i kind of i became a senior person in the department after the 20 okay. years but it was very different back then because you were coding transparencies there wasn't much digital kind of mm -hmm. right. aspect to like yeah you were dealing with color and black separately Why? And wow putting them together wow. um and it was all like you'd send pages off to like a, on a courier to a designer and then have to wait for them to come back. Oh, wow. <laughs> and there was like millions of checks. And then again, checking the color before the black was laid on top. It was yeah. insane. So but, what, when was that? What, what kind of time? It was just for the, my like little timeline in my head. 1998. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. I think around about that time. Yeah. And then as like seeing it evolve and like yeah. an ISDN line to send like, 
um, file was. Yeah. And then everything was just done with the click of a button. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah mad. Could just do a brochure, like everything would fall onto the pages. Well, I think I even I remember going into like like uh, Thomas Cook or whatever, and the mm -hmm. amount of brochures that would be there, you know. And this is like 20, 2006, so let's say. It's insane. But it was weird because, so as I first got that job, I actually enrolled in a photography, local photography course. Oh, okay. Because I was crazy shy. I didn't go to it. Okay. And now looking back, I'm like, what? It's insane. <laughs> photography was there. Like, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and it's weird. Like, what would have happened, I think, if I had gone to it? I mean, yeah. I was crazy shy. There was no, even up until the last minute, my mum was like, you're going to go? And I'm like, no. I'm too shy. That was a time then when you also then found out about the eating disorder the eating disorder took over like it controlled me mm -hmm. um and i guess i mean i was very introverted and shy um and then over time like instead of it controlling me i can control it like yeah. it's never going to go away it's always going to mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. but i'm fine um but not many people knew about it back there back then and i guess once i started i mean i was i was missing out on something i was, was staying at home a lot of the time i yeah. wasn't going out um, and that's when I discovered um, Meetup. And um, then I went to my first meet. And was that WWIM? Yes. yes. Okay, and that was 2014. Okay. So you were shooting, I think, at a time with the Nikon camera. Yes. But you got your first Sony. Do you remember getting your first Sony? Yes, you I remember know? getting that, that. I wasn't really into photography. Okay. Then. That was just for going like a travel cam. Mm -hmm. I think it was a cyber shot. Oh, come on. <laughs> early, oh. it was like cyber shot 1998 oh, yeah. <laughs> um and yeah i just remember being I, and i was in venice in St. park square and i remember taking a shot and it was awful and deleting it and i was like wow mom look at this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the way it normally happens is that you try like 20 different styles and then you find something you're like yeah this is what i want to stick to mm -hmm. but i feel like for you was it always street photography or did you do also like other things that we don't know about i mean i guess going to I mean, worldwide insta me yeah i do um that was where i was or, like seeing other people and what they were doing okay um and then just seeing what you could do with the camera uh -huh. um that was what it was like for me because well, who talk to us about that event because i think that they are they were such a like integral part of so many people's journeys like people that i met in my first one i know i still know now and oh I've, these some i've gone on to do great things um so tell us about like that meet and like where was it who ran it and how come did you go because yeah know, well, you, did anyone make you go and do it okay. so i remember i remember being at home in bed finding <laughs> seeing world like um meet up yeah seeing that there was this thing called an instagram me a worldwide me i didn't know anything about it okay um it was at the it was at tape britain uh-huh um i mentioned it to a friend at work and i was like this looks cool he was he hadn't been at um monarch for that long and i was like do you want to come along he's like yeah i'll know um and that's the only reason that someone was coming with me that i right. do okay um, I remember arriving opposite Tate Bredson mm -hmm. and seeing all these people that hugging and greeting each other. <laughs> that was weird. And I'm like, Andrew, where are you? <laughs> oh, no, I'm running late. And I'm like, I can't go across the road. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was just the time was ticking. And I was like, I have to. And then I just, and I do, and I remember the first person I saw and she was like hugging and I was like, this is weird. <laughs> They're strangers. Yeah. And then we went in and we're wandering around. This girl was like hanging around with me and I was like, again, she's talking to me. That's weird. Oh. <laughs> Andrew arrived. There was someone familiar, you know, I could yeah. talk to yeah. him. But then by the end of that day, um, and it was a long, um, just by opposite Tate Modern, I think, when there was a, there's a pub there. Uh -huh. we ended up there and it was amazing. Just oh. chatting to people and I signed up for the Sundays meet. <laughs> it was oh. an underground one. Oh. And that's where I met a lot of the people now that I'm still friends with. That's yeah. amazing. Um, Let's stop some of those people gone because I'll like, they'll be like a London OGs, I'm guessing. So, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, totally. Well, these are just the, the, yeah. So many and they were like legends. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's sort of funny you say that because I went to my first UK shooters meet on the 1st of August 2021, feeling exactly like you. I was like, end of the line, it was in uh, Berman's Lock, and I was like, oh my God, like I remember messaging Peak, and I was like, oh, I wish you were here. I, I literally remember where I was standing, 
And it was just like, you know, I found everyone so cool when I went there. And I was like, oh, so many people. And at the time, even people having followers, I found very like, you know, yeah. um, now you kind of like look at it a bit differently. But at the time I was so overwhelmed. I was like shitting my pants, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I kind of like, you saying that yeah. really like brings back also the way I felt when I went to the first UK shooters. Yeah. I think I was also private. I wasn't even on Instagram. I was, I had my, um, oh, wow. And oh. I remember people are like, why are you private? And I'm yeah. like, I don't want strangers following me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess a, a big thing that I didn't even know existed was, Instagram super user. Suggested user. Yeah. So, uh, see, I don't know. I can't even say it wrong. Yeah. Um, Garrett told me about it. I think the first time we spoke about it, he mentioned that you were one. I have zero clue about it. And I'm sure hopefully people, some, I'm not some the people only one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. I would, I would love to know, like, kind of like how, how were you like with posting? How was Instagram, Instagram back then for you? Um, and how did yeah. it come about? Like, cause I've heard other people's stories, but through an Instagram caption years ago. I don't think I've heard anyone speak about it on a podcast before. I knew that people were being suggested, like people around me, and then yeah. there was this excitement and this buzz about being on the suggested user list, like you know, your following would go up crazy. Okay. Um, I mean, you had to post consistently, and like, I mean, be on the app. Like, yeah. I mean, and I was, I'd be at work scrolling through, and yeah. my manager at the time would be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm working. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you had to Can't be very, you see? Yeah, you had to be very active yeah. uh, and mention other people and get recognized yeah. and just have a presence on the app. Okay. But I remember other people around me in like the, in the community getting like, like being a, a suggested user. And I was like, oh, that would be really cool. And then, so when you become a suggested user, you can then suggest I think it maybe I think it was a, maybe five or a few people like oh. that you think that is worthy of being on the suggested user list. Okay. Um, so I think a few people wouldn't like. I guess you nominate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a few people would have nominated me, and then one day, and then I remember walking to work, um, and all of a sudden my phone just blew up. You know, like wow. I was getting all these following. I'm like, this is amazing, and you, because everybody knew, they'd be like, oh my god, you're on the suggested oh, user list. Oh, that's so cute. So and just yeah, it, it, um, Instagram would follow you for two weeks. I mean, my following didn't go up as crazy as some people. Toby, for example, his went crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's just, just this excitement, some sort of you know, this recognition as well. Yeah. Yeah, because you would go to meets and you'd meet people and you'd inspire them and, and you'd chat with people and that was the thing, yeah. going to meets. It wasn't just about taking photos, mm -hmm. it was it was being friendly yeah. and inviting like people into that kind of community. Yeah. And do you remember how many followers each you had at the time? I think I had maybe three or four thousand. Okay. Wow. I think. And then it went up to... Um, like 25, 26, so, but some people were like going up. But then also a lot of people it said that it had an effect on their account after a while. I think, it, I think now looking, mine has, I think my, um, my interaction has gone like down crazy. And yeah. it said that's because you were on the suggested mm. list. Well, Don't say everything. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It's like, hey, you know, we gave you this, you know, big thing, but now yeah, like, now. here you go. Yeah. You know? and I, <laughs> it's like everywhere. 2015, 17. The community aspect was at its best. It was like enjoyable to use. You'd interact with people a lot more. I mean, yeah, there was no video then. I don't, at least I don't think even in a post. Um, but it was, you know, I, I, all the good old days, right? But like, you know, it was good old days. Let's not lie. Um, but it was, you know, just the community, like the London for all thing. They used to do the hashtag stuff with London only. And it was a really like fun time to be on there. And there was a lot of like, you, you'd go out and shoot a lot more for the, I, f I always felt like for the love of it. And yeah, like, okay, it's cool to, if you get a shot or you want to post on Instagram, but you'd come away with loads of shots and you, there would be more of an excitement around photography. And not that I'm not excited to shoot or neither is any of you, but like, I think it's, there's more weighing on it these days. Yeah. But there was no pressure then. That's what I mean. Really for fun, fun, right? Yeah, yeah, you were going out. I mean, I became addicted to going to meets. Like, as soon as one was announced. I'd be yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you said about Meetup, that was the website where they, they had the things on there, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember now you said that. And there was quite a few groups. There was, so I think my the one that I went to was the Igers one, Igers London. And oh, yeah, the big page, yeah. That was the one I went to, the 20, I think it was, I was looking earlier, I think it was 2016. 
I went to the one, yeah, the at London one. And you were and you were seeing like you were exposed to like just fun stuff like why wars from in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had the, the, it was like, like how we do at meets have something going on, but yeah. they'd have you'd go on a walk and at, at a specific part of the walk there'd be an activity that you could shoot. Oh, okay, give me an example. So they'd have like, yeah, steel wool and then they'd have like African dancers or like portraits or symmetry, like what they did for Photo 24. Do you know about Photo 24? It's a, mag a photography magazine, basically, one of the big ones, and it's like 24 hour event in London and there's like, you know, checkpoints kind of thing every hour. There's a, there's a subject. Yeah. And you submit photo on your Instagram and sit you 24 hours. And I, I did a project with NPB last year and I filmed a YouTube video about it. Yeah. I didn't do the, the 24 hours. I did like six we did, uh, challenges. Yeah. But I just kind of like wanted to tell people how it looks like in the community aspect. It was actually mostly like 70 plus people, 70, 75 year old. Was oh, they were not that old. Nah, they definitely weren't that old. No. There was a couple there that were like, you know. No, they were from 50 to <laughs> 50. They were acoustics. There was, a, there, was a, there was a couple, you know, and it was, it was like they were really into it. And it was... For 24 hours. Some of them did 24 hours, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. The beauty of like meets was like you did have this spectrum of like super young. Yeah, yeah. Two yeah. so older people. Yeah. They were just like, it was mixing. Yeah. Yeah, and it'd be a whole get together. And that's why I found when I did the photography show with shooters and we were there and people would come like, old guys, well, what's this shoot for shooters? And they'd be like, oh, I go to this thing with my pals and we shoot birds or whatever and we all get together. Trying to explain to someone that yeah, this is similar, but it's just different, you know? So I think, yeah, you're right. It was a real like sense of community getting together and you'd look forward to it. Like before, before like shooters did that and it was the the other meetups yeah you'd really look forward to not i don't look forward to anymore but like it was different i feel like the v whole like vibe was different then and yeah 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 i kind of miss it now being part of the event and like not going to one because I, I know what you mean it's really fun yeah yeah, this whole cute. Yeah. So, cool. so, did you go out and shot every day after work? So, um, also, what were you editing on? I think most of it back then would have been on my phone. Okay, I guess. Yeah, I started on my phone. But I mean, because it was so fast, you were just you were shooting, posting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On yeah. the go, you know, there was no getting home and like looking through. Yeah. Um, so, were you shooting on your phone? I was shooting a lot on my phone. I just used to carry the camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I remember people like, "Do you actually know how to use your camera, Lucy?" I'm like, "Yeah, of course." I <laughs> <laughs> oh, but then, and then just being exposed to other people and just seeing what you could do yeah. with your camera, and then I that, and it was practice and right, and, uh, yeah, going out with other like in, as a group, and then you know, chasing light. Yeah, yeah, yeah like for sure. Before, yeah. And, like it's cool. Yeah, um, and doing the like light trails. I remember being sat on Westminster Bridge like crazy late with two other girls. And a guy, um, yeah, yeah, Jose, and uh, it was just we're waiting for buses, and we were so excited. Yeah. <laughs> got home like midnight, one o'clock. Got to work the next day, and I was still had this adrenaline from like. Oh God, buses. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so cute. It's like now I couldn't imagine you doing long exposure photography, <laughs> but like it, yeah, it's like even for me that was what I found my I loved at one point, and I still kind of love doing it because if you get a really good shot, it's a really good shot, right? But um. Yeah, the the next day thing is so true. And I, and I guess I was just experimenting then, mm. and having like a little person with like on a like with a vast big background, mm. like yeah. a little person in the distance. Um, so I d I didn't really have like a style or okay. I was just shooting anything. But I, I do remember um going to um an Apple talk with Emmanuel Cole, mm -hmm. and that's when I was like, wow, this is this is cool. And I think that's when I was like, oh, okay, street photography is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Um. I didn't, I guess I didn't really, I didn't really know the style that I wanted still, but I was just seeing what he was doing and yeah. inspired me. Oh, he's a, 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 a esteemed street photographer. So Apple would do these things where they would have people come oh, in. Yeah. <laughs> you just turned to me like, at least. <laughs> They'd have people come in, like Ron did a couple, didn't he, where they would do a session for an hour or so about how they shoot and what they shoot. And a lot of them were about obviously shooting on iPhone. Yeah. 
most of it. Yeah, it was just a good way to get insight into someone, let's say something that you didn't shoot. You had that love for travel. So then you started traveling a little bit. I know you went to yeah. Dubrovnik, which is really cool. Yeah. And I guess up until then, I'd never traveled alone. Again, okay. still being quite shy. Um, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to travel alone. So I went to Sorrento for quite mm. yeah. Again, I was still, it was my photography then. And I, I think I did have my, so my first Sony when I went to Sorrento. The A7. Okay. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. So, and I was, again, it was little people. I didn't want to get too close to people. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I was like, oh my gosh, so solo travel is the best. Why well, you love solo travel so much? Just the freedom. To yeah. Mm -hmm. Just do what you want when you want. Um, and it's, I just find it liberating. Okay. And uh, I think with, when you travel alone, you'll talk to strangers. And, and you have to fend for yourself. You have to get from A to B on your own. Yeah. Um, without relying on someone else. Mm -hmm. um, and you do, I think when you're with someone, you you will just talk to that person, yeah. maybe, and not talk to other people. Uh, whereas if you're on your own, you do. You, you're, you're kind of pushed. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I loved about it. Again, it was me finding photography, being more confident, going mm -hmm. to meet, again, chatting to people. Okay. And um, just finding that, I mean, I love people now. Like, I'll oh. chat to a tree if it would chat back. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to Dubrovnik again. If you look at the photos that I took, then a small person, mm -hmm. maybe a sunset with a little person in there. To playing with scale kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it was, and then I went to Madeira. Um, again, I was like, Madeira's an old person place. Mm -hmm. My friend at work was like, no, my aunt goes on. I'm like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, and the flights were for a week. And I was like, what am I going to do in Madeira for a week? Yeah. Um, and I guess I was forced to do street photography there. And that's Madeira's place where I really started to fall in love with street photography. So I was like, when I get back to London, I want to put what I learned in Madeira to practice. In that's where it started. That's where, this, that's where it wow, started. Okay. So Madeira's special to me. I mean, the characters in Madeira, yeah. I mean, we were there for three days and it was like a whirlwind because we tried to do so much in that time. But Literally, I, my, I, I posted a blog on YouTube about this and the title is actually like traveled Madeira in three days and I didn't lie when I say that like it was an intense we did trip, so but much but if we yeah I felt if we would have explored Funchal town more yeah like if we didn't have to do so much we would have there was so many characters yeah. and I think yeah that's where the street photography kind of like really started okay. and then just carving like getting close to people mm. working out everyone has a story and mm. trying to that story and I guess that as well like I think the eating disorder for me played into my photography because mm -hmm. of that story. Like, yeah. on the surface, people saw me as being happy and mm -hmm. fine, but underneath, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't really like myself. And so I think I'm aware of other people because of that. Yeah. And it's not until later that I've, I realized that. You, yeah. I, I guess it takes time to embrace something. Yeah. Like this. Just, yeah. 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 Yeah, sure. but let's say speaking of stories, do you maybe remember? Do you have like a specific story from your solo trip that maybe comes to mind? Anything that happened, or is maybe someone you met or spoke to, or? Um, I mean, I've got, I've got a ton of stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I got stuck at Tel Aviv Airport. They interrogated me for like five hours. Oh my god! Because being, they did warn me that when I was at work, they might, they might talk to you because having an iranian uh-huh uh -huh. okay and they might not like you and what, what year was that it was maybe two, 2017 it was well i'd done a few solo travels um before that one because i was like once i've done like if i can do this yeah. i can do anything yeah let's go yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so yeah that was that was scary well for five hours yeah and i just remember taking my pink suitcases somewhere outside Pink suitcases there, so. Oh, oh God. Well, kind of good to have a pink suitcase. Yeah, exactly. Once I got to, into Tel Aviv, and it was, there was just so many people that were just so friendly and welcoming mm -hmm. and, and talking. I think I met a Jewish Iranian who just invited me to sit with him while he was mending a carpet, um, giving me tea. And I was like, oh, this is lovely. Oh. But yeah, I've, I've, I've met some interesting, even in London, I've, I'm, there was one guy in London who I remember, an older guy who would just sit at cafes. Um, and he would, he would tell me that he, he wasn't married, didn't have kids. And mm -hmm. he was like, I'm just one of life's single people. But it's okay. I'm happy with that. And I was yeah. like, you know what? I'm, that's really nice. Yeah. I'm happy being single too. Yeah. So it's not weird. Yeah. yeah. And I remember his chat with me. Because how often then do you try like connect with them on a, on a, on a level like that with the subject? Like how often do you sort of maybe 
is the approach so you get a shot and then you might approach them or do something like speak to them and get some and then maybe come back later and get a shot or... yeah, I, in london i don't tend to chat to that many people if i take their phone it's also the people in london yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, they're not that friendly yeah <laughs> it's when i go away i think um that's when i'll kind of like like when you're in sicily and they were speaking to you and you had no idea what you said <laughs> yeah that was so good, the story. So good. They just did not care. They just had yeah. to back. So that, I, yeah, I guess there I was just kind of like looking at them, working out, like yeah. trying to read them uh-huh. and then asking the photo and then okay. and then having a chat. Traveling aside, going back to the work situation. So when Monarch collapsed and then you started to think okay well, like talk us about when that happened how it happened did you expect it for a long time was it like a i mean it, i know it was big news but like did you know like internally that it was coming uh, and for how long and then from then you know how long was the gap between that and like was it redundancy and then did you start freelancing and how did it all sort of- i mean i've been there 20 like more than 20 years so I mean, I, I guess, I mean, I love and hate it at the same time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, I could I could knock a brochure out in like a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was very comfortable. So I I wanted to leave, but I didn't mm-hmm. want to leave. So was that the job you were doing at the, the same company yeah. you worked at? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it was familiar, I guess, mm-hmm. and just comfy. So I don't know if I would have gone on my own accord just because of right. yeah, and I, reason. I kind of, yeah, and... I mean, I guess we knew that the company wasn't doing as well, but mm. there was no no signs of right. sort of You just kept yeah, waiting. That was a brochure. I was still doing a brochure. <laughs> yeah. until I was halfway through one, and I was like, this is the easiest brochure production I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> and then we, we saw, like, directors going into the office, so we knew something was happening. Yeah. Um, and I remember the weekend before it happened, and a few of us would be chat, like, we're chatting online, like, online and again i'm sure we'll be fine mm-hmm. um and then i woke up because i used to walk to bromley so it'd take about an hour and a half so i'd wait i woke up at about Wait, you would walk to yeah, work and i'd start at eight so um again i started at eight so that i could have a bit more flexibility and have a friday off okay cool all right um for photography uh-huh. Uh-huh. and i remember seeing the email and just thinking oh shit like it's ended um crying walking to work still and then just getting in and everybody was just in tears. And I think it I think it was it was like grieving for someone. Mm. I think it's because it was taken away and it wasn't yeah. my own accord. Yeah. yeah, it was the people. It was of course it was the people. Um But it was also something like you you you've known for like twenty years. And what was it like people there for a long time? Or yeah. what were the turnover of staff and all that? There was a few departments where the turnover was mm-hmm. but the directors and people, I mean my manager my, the HR manager was the one that employed me. So right, okay, wow. Wow. And I grew up. Yeah, like, basically, yeah. That's crazy. Everything, like, every, my, yeah, everything was based around what? Did you start freelancing immediately or did you start looking for another job? Because, of course, coming from a full-time job that you're comfortable in, it's like, it, it, everyone can agree that having some sort of, like, money and, like, you know that when yeah. ha- when and how money is coming in is, is, is a good feeling, right? Mm-hmm. So what what was your, like, thinking back then? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of wasn't quite sure. Okay. Um, I knew that I didn't want to go back into another corporate kind of yeah. and make friends and like prove yourself. I'm like, I don't yeah. want that. Mm-hmm. And everybody around me was looking for jobs. I think I applied for a job just because I hadn't had an interview for like 20 years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, but I just knew that I didn't want to go back down that kind of. You were applying things like, please yeah. don't reply back. <laughs> Okay. And I get, and I saw it as a now or never time. I, okay. if, I, if I wasn't going to pursue photography, then mm-hmm. like I wouldn't have done it. I'd be back at a job for another twenty years. I yeah. know because I'm, I'm a creature of comfort. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so I just saw that as a sign to mm-hmm. like just try it. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't matter. Okay, don't know what I'll do, but <laughs> yeah. So what what were your steps then? Um, so I had to. I took the redundancy, which wasn't a lot, even though I'd been there twenty years. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And at the same, so two, so 2000, that was 2017. Yeah. It was the same time that, um, a publisher's trope had come to me saying, we love your work. Okay. Um, I think, um, uh, a guy, I think Toby kind of mentioned my name to the publishers okay. and Max Light 
Oh yeah, yeah, I know, I know that name. Okay. Um, so I met the publisher Sam, and Opium and I met him just before my like meeting. Okay. Um, I was like, I don't know what this is about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and it was to be in the London London book. Um, but then Sam really liked my street photography. Okay. Um, and we talked about publishing my own book. That's so quite cool. That kind of, and I was like, wow. I mean, it started just before the like Monokin did, so it was going on in the background. Right. I didn't. I was like, if yeah, it happens. It happens. Yeah. Um, and then it really happened, sort of like once I once the once Monokin did. That's amazing. And so it kind of all worked out. There. Yeah. And then I broke a shoulder. <laughs> Tell me about that day. Actually, it, it told me that I shouldn't walk up mountains. It's not like <laughs> a mountain. It's like a hill. I'm like, yeah, definitely stay to street photography. <laughs> 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 definitely. So I turned forty. So okay. when I ended, I turned forty. Broke a shoulder. That was great. I know. Life has ended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I went to Edinburgh with a friend because he just started work at um, Virgin. Okay. So that was one of the jobs that I applied for. Oh. He got it instead. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't really want it. Um, and we were going to shoot Sunset. No, Sunrise. We were going to shoot Sunrise mm -hmm. at Arthur's Seat. It wasn't that icy. I didn't yeah. think so. Mm. But we, we got halfway up and I was like, Andrew, I can't go any further. It's like too icy. He's like, let's put the cameras. We're so close to the top, Lucy. Like, just keep going. I'm like, I can't. I, I, I don't want to. He's like, no, 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 you can do it. Got nearly to the top and then I just went down. I had odd boots on. Oh, <laughs> it was like that was a really cool story until you mentioned the other bits. Wow, you really okay? Yeah. Well, I have a friend Georgia, and she goes on a trips in her um, flip flops. Okay. She climbs things, and it's never a good idea when I see that on her oh, story. <laughs> you guys should be friends. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. And so, how serious was that? It was. I see. I thought I just dislocated it. Um. So this ranger comes around the corner. Um. Like he was a miracle, um, and then he's like, "Do you want a, Do you want um, an ambulance, like an air ambulance?" I'm like, "No, no, no." I mean, I wish I had because it would have made the story even better. <laughs> um, and went to the hospital. They were like, "Well, I think you've broken it." Had to go back to London, mm -hmm. and then they were like, "Yeah, you've broken it pretty seriously." Okay. Um, and then two days later, they called and said, "You need an operation." I I think I, I've only ever had an operation on my wrist, which again, a break wrist. Um, <laughs> So I was like, and I hate hospitals. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then they put metal on like a, it's about that big. Oh um, my God. Steam Panda? Yeah. Wow. And so, and that for me, like my, my perspective on just my body mm -hmm. changed. I'm like, you need sleep and you need to look after yourself. You're not, I'm not indestructible. Mm. Like, yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually wanted to ask him which, uh, um, yeah. I'm, I'm it because I guess with the camera. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I can't, and I can't stretch this one. Like, okay, up, right, okay. Like when I find out, I'm like, I can't clap. No. The shoulder recovery took a while. Uh -huh. But then Sony approached me to yes. see family on photo talk, and I think I was so high on like, <laughs> I was like, yes, and then I was like, shit. <laughs> I've just signed up for this, and again, I still didn't really like being in front of the yeah. camera. Um, I think it was, yeah, it was just the drugs that kind of pushed me through that. I um, okay. so did that, super nervous. Do you, can you tell me a little bit how did that look like? Yeah, I, I remember talking about against it was street photography and a few photos that I really liked. Yeah. <laughs> how, many, how many people were there? I don't think there was that many. Okay. Like maybe 50, I guess. I mean, 50 is 50, and you know? that's a lot of people. Yeah. If yeah. someone's already to speak in front of 50 people, I'd be shitting it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess one thing I noticed about us uh, speaking and like you doing that is how much you can see yourself and even us, how much have you grown and how much you're confident. Confidence for sure, yeah. Was there anything? So was that maybe one of those pivotal moments when you were like, oh, I'm not like more confident and i can do this more often or was it anything else um i think it i mean going to meets kind of uh, did change yeah the way and I, i'm like it, if you talk to people they'll talk back yeah and i'm yeah. thinking like, well, not on the panel talk right <laughs> 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 or, and I, I remember thinking just go to events on your own because okay. you know someone will talk to yeah. you so i yeah i don't i think it was just going to meet that okay was, cool it was just that change and talking to people on the street and and 
Yeah, I mean, like, people will talk to you. Yeah. If anyone's watching, if you want to gain confidence in the panel dogs, go to uh, our meets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there will someone that will talk to you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, now, just to tell you a funny little story before we start, I messaged Lucy today and I was like, hey, I would love to buy your book. Can you, like, maybe bring me a copy? And I'll put the screenshot here. And she goes, um, Oh, you know, you, you just ruined the surprise. I was, you know, I just wanted to bring this to you guys for the podcast, um, which is kind of funny because I feel like I always kind of <laughs> guess the surprises without even trying to guess. But yeah, this is the book we're talking about. It's called Unfinished Stories. So yeah, let's dive into the world. Wow, I mean, big. just any, anywhere you turn. Any page is just, flat I mean, the unreal. Off. Just a quick thing. Two months ago, uh, we did a job with Jani. And I took a photo of Pika and Leia, um, and it had a reflection, and that was uh, Garrett's idea, actually. We were just about to leave uh, the shoot. We were happy with what we got, and Garrett goes, oh, come outside and try this reflection. It looked insane. I see where you got the inspiration. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, you, you can give her a good. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay, tell me just about publishing the book. How does that end look like, um, the process? I feel like I already had kind of like a body of work that was kind of a similar kind of style. Yeah. So it wasn't too hard in in picking the themes for the book. So there's different themes in there, like stolen moments, mm -hmm. um, reflections. And because I write as well, so there's like a, there's a story mm -hmm. to the images as well. Okay. And then Unfinished Stories was easy as well because it is just unfinished stories mm -hmm. of people. Yeah. Um, so that bit was easy. <laughs> okay. Um, and then it was just, I mean, it was just narrowing down the selection because I've just sent loads of photos um, mm -hmm. and I let the publishers kind of pick the favourite. Mm -hmm. um, so then that took a while. And that's when I think I realised um, that, I mean, I have to own my own story. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't talk about my past yeah. um, because I was ashamed and embarrassed. But then when I was like, actually, I need to own, I'm writing about other people's stories that, or I'm interpreting them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually need to you own. Embrace your own. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that's why I'm more comfortable about speaking about mm -hmm. my eating disorder and how it affected me because, yeah, everyone has a story. When we watched the episode, the, the interview with Trope, and they were speaking to you then about, um, that was during lockdown. And the lockdown three, I think it was, yeah. I think you said. Yeah. How did you feel? Because I remember like being here and I was riding around a lot, um, being in London and being super empty. And I don't I didn't take many photos. Kind of re regret that a little bit, but it was also like I know you touched on the fact you said it felt like it didn't feel like your city because you like the buzz of people. Um tell us like how did you like take on COVID? as a photographer like me from from a work point of view but also like just just missing the general taking photos i again I'd, i wish i'd taken more okay i kind of didn't capture it empty yeah because it felt weird and it uh, it was like everyone was kind of dealing with it in this and it's just it was emotional and mm. just yeah it was yeah i didn't want again i didn't want to upset people didn't really take i mean i took the camera out every day so i'd walk to lotion okay. stand at a bus stop every day okay <laughs> Um, and standing there now is weird because <laughs> it's it's a completely different vibe. Yeah. Um. So I'd stand there and kind of take pictures of people through the the glass. Okay. Mm. But there wasn't much really going on. Yeah. Um. And especially with the fifty five, again, I didn't want to get too close. And that's when I got the eighty five because I was like, I want to take photos still. Okay. I kind of the eighty five is perfect. I thought you were a seasoned eighty five user for some. <laughs> Um, but yeah, okay, I guess that also affected and COVID affected on what lens to buy. Yeah. So would you say, if anyone's watching and wants to get into street photography, what, what would be the, maybe the, the, the good lens to first go for? What, what, what would you suggest? 55. 55? Yeah. Okay. Because it does force you to get closer. Yeah. Like, I feel like the 85 is a bit of a cheat. Uh, you know, because you don't need to. Please. Yeah. 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 And now do you shoot mostly with 85 or still 55 now that it's kind of like things are ba kind of ba back to normal? <laughs> I st yeah, I mean, the, the 85's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The Sony 85s? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a considered lens. Yeah. Like, yeah. do I feel like I want to walk around with that? Mm. So yeah, 80, uh, 85 sometimes, 55 still. That's that's cool that you have one set up and you don't have to complicate things. Mm. Because what I sometimes find, and even in our recent trip to New York, was like, 
have the 24 to 70, have the 16 to 35, both heavy anyway. But it's like, I want to vlog, but then I also want to get details. And sometimes having one lens and just one focal length is probably just the best way to go. Yeah. So what would be maybe some of your uh, street photography tips coming from someone that is uh, an expert in that? <laughs> uh, go to somewhere busy. Okay. So you, and then, and read, I mean, my big thing is read the, like, read the area. Yeah. Okay. Read the room. Because of, anyway, I've been to some places, even in London, I'm like, yeah, it's not, I don't feel comfortable. Yeah. So definitely don't. Like, don't start shooting as soon as you get somewhere. Why would you say it's like, well, let's say I'm like, right, we're going to go shoot on the street. Where are we going? Um, we would be going to Court Garden. Ah, <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah okay, great cool. spot. Yeah, yeah. I like Leicester it. Square. Mm. It's constantly busy. Yeah. No one's going to really pay much attention no, to you. No, they're not. And what would be a place where you would be like, oh, okay, I'll put your camera away? Peckham. Uh -huh. Even oh, now, okay. yeah, still. I've taken my camera to Peckham. But you, I, I can just feel it's just. And you being from Southeast, I'll, so I'll take that as possible. Yeah. <laughs> Trust Lucy on this one. Yeah. Actually, I did one shoot in Peckham, and I remember because we were thinking of moving, and Peckham is a uh, really good prices, right? Mm -hmm. Incredible. And crazy, like the creativity there is amazing. Mm. Yeah. I actually, a coffee shop today, I was talking to him, and he lives in Peckham. But then again, it made me feel a bit sketchy. But then Lewisham's a bit sketchy. Mm. So would you say living in Lewisham has in kind of... In has moulded you? Definitely. Thick-skinned. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Nice. Again, though, like, shooting there for me is weird. Okay. Like, lockdown was fine. Yeah. But shooting there, like, if I went tomorrow with my camera, I'd kind of feel a bit uncomfortable. Okay. Oh. I think it's because I don't want those people to, like, confront me and yeah. to see them again when mm -hmm. I walk through on Monday. So. Yeah, because there's a photographer I follow and I'm not sure if he's eaten by flowers. He's from, uh, yeah. So he is ballsy. Because he'll always, on his story, people, he'll do the questions and people are like, oh, what about some of these shots you get? Like, do people not get offended? He's like, well, I, I just get the shot and I deal with the consequences after. And if, you know, end of the day, like, some of it, he, he, he understands, like, the right place right time kind of thing but i think if you shoot street sometimes you got to risk it for the biscuit kind of thing just expect something might expect a, a reaction but sometimes the reaction is them seeing you take the photo you know now one one tip i can say from street photography is sometimes if you were taking a photo of a person and you see that they see you you check your settings feel, no <laughs> no 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 <laughs> if let's say they walk past you you wait for them to even though you were taking a photo of them you wait for them to walk past you and you keep shooting yes. so they're like oh she wasn't shooting me yeah, yeah. you know that's kind of like one thing that i've done a few times and i'm like oh you think i'm shooting you yeah. no i'm not well, i'm fully yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah what's going on there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh it's got a <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my yeah. camera sense was so dark. Yeah. Another thing I do do, especially with like the reflection window shots, is, is I do pretend like I'm like, oh, is it is, is it focusing? I'm like, yeah. Okay. Or I go on the phone. I'm like just chatting to my mom. Uh -huh. Okay. And then I'm still like, <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, like, I love that one. But let's say, speaking of this, do you maybe have a story where someone confronted you, or? Have you had a weird altercation with someone? Like say, street photography. Interaction. Huh? <laughs> maybe like. Back when I first started, oh, right. and that would have been in Brixton, but I think the guy was kind of unhinged anyway. Mm -hmm. okay. But that, that that put the fear, I ran down into the underground, and I could still hear him shouting. And I didn't even take his photos. Uh, so, what yeah. was the situation? What? I was just, again, standing at a bus stop waiting for people, and um, he just shouted at me, just don't take my photo. And I hadn't taken his photo. Um, mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, you need to leave. Um, and I just ran down and I could still hear him shouting from the top of the stairs. Oh my God. So that kind of scared me. Yeah. Have you ever had anyone tell you, oh, I charge? Only in Morocco. Oh. Oh, wow. No, not over here. Only because they thought that you were going to go home and sell quotas and make Makes money. Sense. And they'd be like, oh, you need to pay. Yeah, I have. Uh, funny enough, I had this happen to me once. And it was like three days after I moved to London. Okay. And I remember moving here and I was like, I'm just going to go hard at this photography. And I was on the tube with my 28 to 70, like, you know, lens, the 
uh, uh, filming us right now. Filming us right <laughs> now, right? That's nice. And I remember I took a photo. I was pretty far with this guy. He just had like the the coat, you know, yeah. the hat, and yeah. I was just like, "You look so cool." And I was really far away from him on the tube. And I took a photo, and he 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 heard, I guess, the sound or whatever. And he was like, "Oh, you you you'll have to pay me for that." And I remember just thinking. Fuck, I just moved to London. Like, I really want to do this. And now the first experience of taking photos is someone telling me I have to pay them. Uh, it was just kind of more of like an awkward experience. But he was kind of joking as well. But it was just, you, you don't want to hear. Yeah, no. Now I would be like, I don't yeah. care. You know, yeah. maybe the first three days I was like. Oh. So are you grateful for silent shooting or on Sony? I'd like to hear it. Same. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. when we were in the world trade center and our friend you know got us access to this floor and he was like yeah you can do what you like here so i was so excited that i kept the shutter on and the security guard after like five minutes like now nah, you guys are gonna have to go now and it's like and it's like yeah silent shutter is very silent on sony i find like anyway you'll be practicing it and you're like taking like 20 30 yeah 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 like, did i actually you know also another big question i have for you I just thought of it, but do you shoot like single? Continuous or single? Yeah, all day long. Come on. She's like, uh, uh, I'm like, nah, you have to get the shot. All of them, you know? <laughs> you have to get the shot and that's it. Like, yeah. But do you maybe find that, let's say. It's like shooting on film one time only, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but let's say what I kind of found for me is that if I don't have the continuous shutter on, I find myself thinking a little bit more about the photo, maybe getting a better photo. What are you also like? Do you shoot any uh, film? No, but I just bought a Leica. Oh, oh you know, like, completely different. Oh, so we're giving this like Not low key right now. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a film, like no. Oh, nice. I took it to Sicily with me. Okay. Um, and I used it there. But I haven't used it in London that much. Oh. Yeah. I mean, that's a cool moment buying a Leica. Like you know, it's not. Yeah. Selling a kidney. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah, for real. <gasps> what are your thoughts on Instagram in general, on, this, on reels, on... Uh, and now, especially, we have AI taking over. How are you... What are your thoughts on that? Yes, I mean, it's scary. AI okay. is scary, I think. Okay. Um, I'm not a fan. <laughs> but, uh -huh. but, yeah, I, do, I mean, I don't know. I mean, reels, I've never really done a reel, apart from all my wedding stuff. I mean, Instagram has changed like completely i mean i won't stop using it just because of what it's done mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, and i'll still i mean even if 10 people like it yeah exactly yeah, it's still gonna hurt but yeah <laughs> yeah cuts deep but yeah. so i'll continue using it as i do i mean i don't post as much as i used to mm -hmm. um so i probably should do you think nowadays you'd like to be like on it with posting and posting every day yeah okay but i find life like i used to be like all the time, maybe even twice a day or sometimes. And now it's like, it's a good shot. You're like, why is it the same days? You know? Yeah. And it's like, I think I kind of want to do that again, you know, but then with this real thing, it's, it's a pressure. Yeah, no, there is this pressure. And like, and you, some, I feel like now, if you don't post for a day, it lapses into like a week. And I'm like, yeah, it can go so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I would like to get back into okay. consistent. Sure. So would you say you have a lot of shots that no one's seen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like hard drives, like. <laughs> and edited as well. Yeah. So yeah, I I How do you go about writing captions on Instagram? I think it, I mean, I try to interpret what I think the person in okay. the image is feeling. Because sometimes you feel like quotes. Yeah. And I really love that. Yeah. Or it's, I mean, sometimes it's just me, my feelings coming out. Okay. There was a, there was a kind of quote you said in this interview I read um, about you and you said how you'd love that with your photography, people can kind of like be in your shoes and you can allow them to see something the way maybe you capture mm. it or maybe as they're you know in their own eyes mm. i think that's really nice you might think the person's just thinking about what shopping they're gonna buy tonight yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah or someone else might look at it and like it will yeah it will connect and uh they'll relate to it mm -hmm. they'll feel something yeah. really different is there a shot that has el eluded you and up until now that you really want to get is there like something that you have in mind like for something to align in a street scene or anything like that that you wanted to ever get? I think so. I don't know. Because no. I was reading about like like Jeremy, the Ian by Flowers, he said he waited four and a half years for a shot. 
Yeah, of these cars in 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 color, like on on a highway. We'll, we'll show you the photos. Though. And it's like that's a long. And he shoot. He only shoots film. Wow. So I mean, I've got another level of respect. Yeah. <laughs> film me. And then I even remember people like um, Ed Robertson, for example. You know Ed? Yeah, yeah. So when he was, I remember he would talk a lot about waiting for someone to walk, like in Brick Lane. Let's say there was like a balloon on the wall. He'd wait for someone to walk in almost like they were holding the balloon. Things like that, like street moments that would take time, you know, that you might stand there for two hours waiting for that shot. Yeah. One of my favorite shots I took during lockdown is of an old lady's hat. Like she was smoking. Mm. And the colors just worked. <laughs> yeah. I want another shot like that. Okay. <laughs> what, with her like taking a drag? Or just, yeah, just, I wish I'd kind of been a bit braver. Mm -hmm. Again, it was COVID times. So yeah. I kind of shot from a bit of a distance. Yeah. But it was just the colors just worked perfect. Cigarette shots always look good. And it's just like they just have a great look to them. Yeah. I actually like I don't smoke but I have a, a pack of cigarettes um I just have it at home because if I was to do a shoot with someone perhaps that smokes I'd be like here I have a pack for you I mean I wouldn't yeah. want to smoke a pack but I'm just saying like it's literally a prop I have at yeah. home in case I do a shoot it, it looks cool, cool. Does it really cool. does so strange like it mm -hmm. shouldn't look cool it's not good <laughs> for you at all yeah. so let's say with the whole Instagram thing your thoughts on reels like it's not something you want to get into videos no okay. I'm going to stick to the skill. okay cool yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot of respect for that shouldn't feel the pressure sell your song <laughs> <laughs> like all of us did no yeah. and then Sometimes I'm like, that's very yeah, true. nah, for sure. Yeah, I think that, yeah, it's it's the pressure, and there's so much content out there now. Like it's a it's a minefield, and I think that I think it's now a case of I watched a reel yesterday from this guy, and he was like, you have to just put it out there because if you don't make it, someone else will. And he that is to do with photo and video. You know, is if you you have something that you want to put out there, then Put it out there basically so we were waiting for those yeah <laughs> we're, we're all as bad as each other because we have so much stuff we that we haven't put out there yet, and it's like it's just uh, oh for sure and it should be no overthinking just posting yeah. now that you are this you know established instagrammer mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that words and that's an old word um what about nowadays and outside of like the social media thing like you run a wedding business a photography business with your friend yeah how did that come about that came about as i needed to do something for work mm -hmm. yeah um the two of us kind of were just chatting and we were like well i kind of like to do weddings in street like our style okay not the whole posed stuff like not at all um but i don't really don't want to do them on my own okay. okay so we were like let's do it together there's less Same. pressure yeah 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 for um, sure and it'll be more fun with the two of us. Absolutely. So we started that like during COVID. I mean, we we picked up a couple of weddings during COVID, okay. but they were weird because people couldn't stand up. You had to sit down. Uh -huh. um, so that was odd. Yeah. And then last year we had like a 20. Wow. Okay. Do you guys have a name for that? It's together? just Ari and Lucy. Oh, oh, nice. So nice. How long have you guys been friends for? So Ari and I met at a meet. I think it must have been about six years. Okay. Oh, yeah. Maybe five, six, yeah, maybe five, six years ago. And we weren't really that friends, and she's in the London book, so we kind of, again, met. Is that how you connected? Yeah, that's how we really, so she has a photo in the London book, and then we, like, saw each other um, when we all met up. Now, one thing I, I when, when you told us about that business, I was thinking this actually on the way here. It's not in the question, but I was thinking about it. Um, you know, sometimes you have a love for something that's in photography or whatever you do, and then you start doing it for work, right? Mm -hmm. Has maybe that changed for you? I've literally, like, recently edited a video, and I I basically did it for the money because we all need to, like, yeah. make money, right? Yeah. And I was just there like, yeah, that's cool, and that money is going to allow me to do the things that I want to mm -hmm. do, but damn, I really, like, this is really not me. I mean, I, I had a feeling it might happen. Okay. I mean, I never wanted to because I, I want to carry on shooting all the time. But mm. I yeah. love it. Um, and I guess, I guess I, I mean, I still try and shoot every weekend. Okay. Like, Saturday and Sunday. I prefer wow. shooting the weekends to the weekdays. And how long could you normally shoot for? Like, in it's less. I, and I can't. I can't walk as much as I used to. 
<laughs> okay. I can't stand outside a coffee shop for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I would, I guess, I tend to get up into London about eleven in, okay. and then come home about five, six. Wow, so quite a while. But you're coming away with a fair amount of shots after all that time. Oh, yeah. yeah. How many shots do you, would you normally take on a on a weekend like this on a day? Uh, I don't know, a good few hundred. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, but just not all of them. Not all of them, of course. Yeah. <laughs> is there is there photography that you never post that you still like to take photos of, or is it all street moments? Yeah. No more long exposures now. <laughs> I don't feel like I've forgotten how to do a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> I ride on the bike. Especially like a, a wire wall. I'd like, kind of love to do that again. <laughs> it's cool, eh? It's fun. It is. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you have been or had maybe a certain client experience when you were literally like, oh, I find this taking photos now a tiny bit exhausting yeah. because of... Yeah, yes, I have um, definitely. But okay. I just, yeah, I mean, again, it's in the money. You need yeah, to. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What does the future hold for you? Okay. Oh. I mean, it's hands. Oh, I thought you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I love hands. Um, Amazing. So, yeah, I, I would love to do another book. Okay. Um, And then I've just worked on a project which I hope might lead to something else. Okay. Amazing. One thing I didn't ask you, but I, mean, I know you mentioned um, one person, E. e Cole, right? But then. Who was there anyone else that really stood out to you that inspired you in in photography? I mean Toby Shinobi, his um his passion and uh -huh. his, his I mean he just he was constantly He was constantly. and getting gems all the time. Yeah. I mean I guess his his motivation mm -hmm. inspired me. Um and to travel and, and and to just do things for myself. Yeah. Um he was really like And plus he was working in law as well, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he inspired me. Yeah. No, anyway, hopefully he'll see this. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah. And do you have maybe any travel plans for the future? I want to go back to Sicily. I loved it. Um, I loved okay. it. I mean, I'd been before, but it was just so easy to shoot. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. We we were actually the first time there in January mm. yeah. a year ago, and it was it was dope. Yeah, was, really yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sicily is great. So yeah, I, I mean, I love. I if there was only one country to go back to, like if I had a choice, it'd be Italy always. Oh. Amazing. Well, if you want to find Lucy, go to Italy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I guess with that we can end this episode. That was really nice conversation. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yes. Thank you. It was an honor having you on. Yes. Honestly. <laughs> yes. When we were um, kind of writing the list in January, you were just there on the top I was like yeah. Lucy okay wow. we were already wow. hoping you were going to do it <laughs> uh, so thank you for that tell people where they can find you Juicy Lucy how? Juicy Lucy tell me yeah. I mean every. I want to know everyone wants to know <laughs> okay so when I was little my dad would pinch my cheeks and say Juicy Lucy oh <laughs> that's cute that is so cute but do you remember maybe a time when you did someone did say something and you were feeling a bit like awkward but then you tell them do you tell people then the story why do you have it like that only if people ask but okay people do be like do you see Lucy? Oh, yeah do you see Lucy? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I'm like, I'm it, guys so yeah like, oh good and was that your first and only instagram name was juicy lucy not free <laughs> Wait, can, it, can, we, can we check if there's a Juicy Lucy? You have to be careful what comes up. Yeah, normally it's just one of those strange things, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like accounts that have been like, uh, uh, images has been probably like eight years ago. Yeah. And you'll message them like, pay me. <laughs> I mean, I think there's a lot of women. <laughs> yeah, it's all going to be. Oh, there might be. Yeah, it's, um, it's uh, a woman and she's, she's posting. Yeah. She's posting a... She, she posted it in May, yeah, with her husband. Yeah. It looks quite juicy, Lucy. I mean, Juicy Lucy's active, yeah. <laughs> Fitch of her and her husband having a beer. So they're having a good time and that's good. She's Juicy Lucy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I guess, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you for the story. I was actually really curious and I'm glad we, we asked and we came to this conversation. And yeah, with us, you can find us Trust Your Choices everywhere we were yep. really lucky to kind of like have just this name literally on every platform um thank you so much for watching thank you for coming and we'll see you in the next episode peace out <laughs> <laughs>